All right, let's start on a compass construction here. This one is going to be a dilation. We're going to take the quadrilateral, LYNX, our good old mascot, the Lynx. We're going to do a 2 to 1 dilation around the external point P. This will very conveniently be a compass construction. And for other, uh, for other scales, we may have to actually measure. But we can get away pure compass here. So this is section 9.7 in our geometry textbook, and it's a sketch pad lab that we're also doing in class. So if you missed it in class, I hope you're getting it here. I'm going to start with a straight edge, and we're going to draw a ray from my external point P passing through L. Make sure you allow enough distance. You know I need to double the distance from P to L, and I'm going to do that by with my compass I'll put the needle on the L, swing an arc through P, swinging the compass around here from L to my new point L prime. I will have doubled the distance from P to L, P to L prime, since L is the midpoint. So let's do that again. I'm going to place a ray from P to Y. Place the needle of my compass on the Y, swing that arc through P again, and that has this point. That will be Y prime. I'll do it again from P to N. Swing the compass arc, needle on the N, swinging an arc through P gives me a point of intersection over here. That will be N prime. And finally, one more. I'll draw a ray from P passing through X. Swing my arc over here. And that's going to give me X prime. All that remains is to draw the figure L prime to Y prime to N prime to X prime, back to L prime. And that's our dilation. So our finished construction looks like this. You've left all the construction lines on there. It's very nice, especially the compass swings. But um, I'm going to hide them, take those away. And just for a brief second, let's take away those construction marks too. And you can see the figures are of course similar, but let's manipulate now the f our point of dilation. If I were to change the point of dilation, I'm going to change the image. Here it's on an external point. How about if we dilated about a point that's right on the image? or the pre-image. Or perhaps our point of dilation was on the inside. If we want to see that with our rays, it would look like this. Dilation on the outside. The image you can see is on the opposite side of our point of dilation there's our dilation on a vertex. And there's a dilation from the interior region. Many ways to look at this figure. Well done. In this example, we're going to perform a scalar multiplication and some well, we've got a figure right here. This is going to be our triangle we're going to plot. 
and we're going to have a scale factor of two-thirds, making this a reduction. So we'll calculate these coordinates. We picked some easy numbers to work with, all multiples of three. So let's just get an idea how this works. Let's plot the points. W on the x-axis, plotting G over there in the first quadrant, and Z in the fourth quadrant. Drawing our triangle, there's our pre-image. Now let's do our calculations. 2 thirds of negative 9, negative 6. 2 thirds of 0, 0. Gives us the coordinates of W prime right there. And again, 2 thirds of 12, 9. 2 thirds of 9 would be 6. Giving coordinates of G prime. 2 thirds of 6, 4. 2 thirds of negative 3 would be negative 2. We can plot our z prime. And there we go. We have generated the image. And now this rule, this multiplication rule, is only going to work dilating about the origin. And as we can see, because it's dilated around the origin, that the any point on the preimage is collinear with its corresponding point of the image and the origin. Just like that. And maybe we'll look at the matrix multiplication associated with this. Now one more thing with this scalar multiplication that we've just gone through. and um, We are going to change our representation. Let's I need to make some room here. We're going to represent this with matrices. Now, I'm going to put the preimage back up here. You all remember how to how to express this preimage as a matrix, and that's the triangle WGZ. This time, we're multiplying it by a scalar. We might call it a scalar matrix. It is a single element. That element is two thirds, the scale factor. So at that is a one by one matrix being multiplied, in this case, by a 2 by 3 matrix. If I were to do this, and um, then being a scalar, I can just simply multiply that number times every element in the matrix, and my product matrix would look like this. And there you have it. And that would be the matrix representation of a scalar.